Imagine you're at an Asian restaurant where the food plates go on a conveyor belt like the ones at the airport. You're starving, but you can only grab a plate when it comes within your reach. What's more, your favorite dish may not even be served today. Or, it's possible that someone at the beginning of the belt will grab it before you do. In fact, the cook's a bit absent-minded and completely oblivious to your wishes. He delivers food in three rounds following no order whatsoever. On a single plate, you might get one maki, or two, or three, a dumpling. Dumpling? But that's a ravioli. <sighs> a complete disaster. Perhaps you wanted sashimi, but having just enough time for a quick lunch, you might have to pass on this one and gobble down anything you can. So combine food plates in the best feasible manner to get the most points possible. According to the number of players, each player receives 10 cards when 2 play, 9 when 3 play, 8 when 4, and 7 when 5. The game lasts 3 rounds and it follows a draft dynamic in which a player plays a card from their deck and passes the rest to the next player. In each round of Sushi Go, players play a card face down from the deck and simultaneously reveal them. These stay face up till the round ends. After playing a card, the players pass their deck to the person sitting at their left and the process is repeated. The round ends when the cards run out. Then, the points are added up. In our video review, you can download these scoring cards we designed to help you keep track of points. Once the round is finished, the cards are discarded and new cards are drawn. Three rounds are played. There are eight types of cards. For every two temporas, you'll get five points. For every three sashimi, you'll get ten points. Dumplings give you points exponentially. One dumpling scores one point. Two score three. Three, six. 4, 10, and 5 or more dumplings score 15 points. There are three types of nigiri, egg worth 1 point, salmon worth 2, and squid worth 3. If you combine a nigiri with a wasabi by first playing the wasabi, then the nigiri, the value of that nigiri triples. Once a wasabi is used, you can't reuse it or exchange the nigiri on it for a different one. In fact, if you play a wasabi, the next nigiri you play has to go on the wasabi. There are three types of maki roll cards. Cards with one, two, or three rolls. The maki rolls don't score on their own. You have to be the first or second player with the most rolls at the end of the round to get six or three points, respectively. Puddings are like the maki rolls. However, the player with the most puddings gets six points, and the one with the least loses six points. But don't worry, they only score at the end of the last round. So don't discard them between rounds. Hoard them on the table until the end of the game. The chopsticks are very different. They're not worth any points, and you can't use them in the turn you play them. On a turn you play and place them face up, and on a later turn you use them. What they allow you to do is play two cards in one turn. Play a card like you normally would and yell out, Sushi Go! Then play another card and return the chopsticks back to the deck in your hand, so it continues going around for other players to use. Well, that's it. Enjoy your meal. That was our express tutorial for Sushi Go where we gave you a quick idea of the game and showed you the basic rules. So we skip those unnecessary details that an experienced player can clarify if need be. If you don't want to read the booklet at all, watch our detailed tutorial by clicking that box. Use this video to teach your friends how to play while you set up the game. In case you're interested in what we think about the game itself and how to improve certain aspects, watch our review by clicking this box. Your opinion is what keeps us going, so thumbs up if you think we deserved it and share your thoughts with us by leaving a comment below. Games on board. We do the reading, you do the playing.